Hi everyone and welcome back. Today's video I'm actually going to be discussing chemical peels like I promised some of you, some of you guys. And I'm just going to jump right into it because there is, although as an overview of chemical peels, there's kind of like a lot to cover and I don't want to pass like, you know, I don't want to spend an extreme amount of time on it. Okay, so let's start. Now, in the field of skincare, we define the process of exfoliation or the process of removing the excess dead skin cells from the epidermis. Um, we call it either superficial peeling, exfoliation, obviously you hear that word a lot, keratolysis or desquamation. Now, this process can be achieved in several different ways, such as... Um, like microderm, which is mechanical exfoliation, scrubs, which you would do at home. That's a form of manual exfoliation. Oh, got a little hair sticking out here. Okay. <laughs> and um, chemically, such as glycolic or lactic acids, as well as resurfacing. I know you guys heard that, such as like with lasers. And that I'm going to be touching in like a future uh, video. I'm actually going to be breaking, I'm going to be doing a series of exfoliation, all right? And it's going to be broken up into different things. I'm going to be discussing microdermabrasion, laser resurfacing, um, separating the peels, like what does medium peel, what is a medium peel, what is a deep peel, what is a light peel. So I'm going to discuss all that, but today I'm going to be speaking to, uh, specifically on chemical exfoliations or chemical... Yes, chemical exfoliations or chemical chemical acids, chemical glycolics. <laughs> Why can I think right now? Anyway, now the pills that physicians perform are or that they are the ones that they administer are medium to deep peels and they actually penetrate the dermal layer, whereas the peels that a anesthetician performs are light peels and these are non aggressive or non invasive in nature. And they actually work by, they, they enhance the epidermis by working on the dead um, skin cells and not on the dermis or not in the dermis or, you know, the living tissue, which, which is what the dermis is. Now, the cell renewal factor or the CRF or the cell turnover rate, whatever you want to call it, and that keeps, that's what keeps our cells from building up. But as we age, the process does slow down, all right? So babies, they, they exfoliate their skin naturally every 14 days. Teenagers, about 21 to 28 days. Uh, middle age, about uh, 28 to 42 days. And the 50 and older crowd, it takes about 42 to 84 days. So assisting the natural, the natural exfoliation process is so important because as we all know that the accumulation of dead skin cells on our, on, our, on our face, it causes a whole host of skincare issues such as clogged pores, which lead to breakouts, the illusion of like fine lines, wrinkling and um, dry skin or crepey looking skin. Also, it causes um, it can make your skin look dehydrated, and there's a poor product penetration. And you can sit there and spend like tons of you know money on really expensive creams and cleansers or whatever, but if it can't penetrate your skin, then it's just sitting on the surface of your skin and it's doing nothing. All right, so it's extremely important that you exfoliate your skin in whatever manner you know you seem fit or you know which whatever way you would like, I guess. Now, the deep peels versus light peels. All right, so the deep peels are physician administered, all right, and they use the following chemicals. They use phenol, which is also known as carbolic acid or baker's peel. They use Jesner's solution between four to 10 coats. And um, uh, TCA, which is trichloroacetic acid. And I know, you're, I know you're like, what the heck did you say? I'll put like a little annotation or something somewhere. Somewhere up in here <laughs> uh, with, with the word, all right? Now, Jesner's um, solution is actually a superficial peel, which is made up of um, lactic acid, salicylic acid, and ethanol. I'm sorry, and, and resorcinol and an ethanol solvent. And um, it is very strong. TCA is a medium peel, which peels, um, which pretty much removes the epidermis. But even stronger than that is a phenol-based peel, which 
actually peels all the way down. It's very, it's, it's highly acidic and it's very caustic. And it peels all the way down into the dermis. So these are really extreme peels. These are peels that are geared for people that have like extreme, extreme amounts of sun damage on their skin. Again, like a tons of like hyperpigmentation, age spots, um, and really, really deep wrinkles. I mean, this is extreme. I mean, unless you're like, unless you look a lot older than than your than what your age is supposed to show. I mean, these are extreme. But I will definitely discuss that in a later or a future video. Now, light peels. Light peels are um, esthetician administered and they actually use um, glycolic acid and lactic acid in the, in the concentrations about 30% or less. Whereas, um, like a physician, they use glycolic and lactic acids in a concentration of 50% or higher. All right. But what you will get a, at a salon or, a, you know, an esthetician's um, treatment room is 30% or lower. They also use Jes Jesner solution, but... Um, like between one and three coats all right whereas physicians they use between four to ten coats and enzyme peels enzyme peels are really nice because for a skin that's more sensitive or that is you know has, is suffering from rosacea or is acne inflamed it's really nice because it's not going to irritate your skin and how the enzymes work they actually eat up or digest the dead skin cells on the surface you know on the epidermis and they don't, they don't dissolve the intercellular cement or the glue or the bonds between the cells such as the glycolic or the lactic acids would all right now the pH, how the pH affects, which is also called the potential hydrogen, and how that affects the skin. I mean, it's very important because peels need to be, or acids need to be between one and six, all right, to be effective um, for this process, all right. And our skin is naturally between 5.5 and average, so our skin is um, slightly acidic in nature, and it and, and how that takes place is because of our sebum and our our sweat it forms an acid mantle all over our skin not just on our face i mean all over our skin because you got to remember that our skin um it, its main its main uh purpose is a form of protection that's like its number one job is to protect our bodies all right from any from any external um factors all right that might be detrimental to our health in any which any which way all right so on a daily basis you don't want to use acids on your skin because you don't want to irritate your skin on an everyday basis but for the sole purpose of this procedure or this gosh not procedure but for this process you definitely you know the acid definitely needs to be a lot lower than the skin's ph in order to be effective and how it works is the alpha the alpha hydroxy acids penetrate the corn the stratum corneum through the bonds between the cells, all right? And the intercellular cement or the lipids or the bonds, whatever you want to call it, are actually comprised of ceramides, lipids, um, sphingolipids, glycoproteins, and active enzymes. And that's just to kind of name a few because the list is a little longer. Now, other acids that can be used to accomplish the same result will be um, you can use lactic acid, tartaric acid, malic acid, and citric acid, as well as um, salicylic acid or beta hydroxy acid. And there's only pretty much like beta, I hate the word like the BH, oh, BHA, beta hydroxy acid. Woo! Listen, there's only one beta hydroxy acid and it's salicylic acid. So I don't understand why they don't just call it salicylic acid and drop the BHA situation there. But whatever. Anyway, salicylic acid is derived from willow bark or winter green, and it is good. Um, it is good for dissolving the oils, and it also has antiseptic and anti-inflammatory properties. So that's why it's really good for acne uh, skins as well as skins that you know that are oily. All right, because it's going to help to really. Um, break through the oil on the surface of your skin and go deep in your pore to clean and exfoliate the pore and keep the bacteria from forming in there. So if you have oily skin or if you act, you know, if you're acne prone, products that have salicylic acid in it is going to help um, with your skin type. All right. Now the peel benefits. All right. What, you know, what is the purpose? Like, what does it do? You know, why should you get peels? Now, Peels help to improve um, your the skin. It helps improve your skin um, and increase the cell renewal factor, 
or the CRF. It's also going to help with the, your hydration, the, your intercellular lipid barrier function. Um, it's going to help with moisture retention. Your um, elastin and collagen pro uh, production is going to increase and it's going to help to reduce fine lines and wrinkles and any pigmentation making your skin smoother and softer and peels also help to control skin conditions such as um you know like acne hyperpigmentation clogged pores dry skin and eczema now um in contrast to that they are like what, you, what the industry calls contraindications and it's just a warning it's just you know like a little red light goes off like oh wait a second you know why can i why can't i use this or why can't you know there's some people that um have conditions that just at that moment that can't go through chemical exfoliations and i'm just gonna have like i have a little list here all right so these are the reasons why you should not peel all right if you have had any recent cosmetic um, surgery, any laser resurfacing, any any um, dermabrasion, because besides the the cosmetic surgery, dermabrasion and laser resurfacing is a form of exfoliation. All right. If you are if you have any allergies or sensitivities to the products or ingredients, if you're pregnant, if you have herpes simplex, like you know on, on the mouth area, you cannot get this done. If you have hyperpigmentation tendencies you cannot get it done. Um, if you use Accutane, Retin-A, or any other medications that thin out the skin or exfoliate the skin, you're exempt. You can't, you can't, you know, you don't want to thin out your skin even more, all right? So, you know, you're already exfoliating right there. If you have any inflamed rosacea or acne, if you have any infectious diseases, open sores or lesions, and if you are sunburned or irritated, all right? So, these are the reasons why you don't want to go undergo a, a series of um, chemical exfoliations, all right, or chemical peels. And when you go and meet with your skincare therapist um, or esthetician, you are going to go through a consultation, all right? So you are going to be asked these questions, and some of these are pretty personal reasons why you shouldn't, but it is all for your safety and the safety of them also. Now, the post peel home care all right you definitely need to avoid the sun and, and, and avoid any other exfoliating um techniques or any other any other exfoliation outside of the recommended home care program all right and typically they what you what you would get for like a home care program would be um like glycolic acid usually in a five percent cream or in a moisturizer base and this should be used once every other day um or once a day now you can use it at nighttime before you go to bed or in the daytime under your sunscreen all right and make sure you put it you apply it on dry skin because if there's any moisture left on the skin it's going to activate the the acid even more and it's going to cause stinging all right and definitely um up your the concentration of your um sunscreen all right so if you're using a 30 go up to a 45 the point is you definitely need to um protect yourself from the rays of the sun when you're when you're undergoing these these peels all right peels do cause the skin to become drier and sometimes flakier so keeping your skin well hydrated is very important all right um you can use also you can use glyco these glycolic um creams with any other cleansers or moisturizers just make sure that they're non-irritating and um non-comedogenic okay and you can it usually it takes about up to six weeks to see results um but you can start seeing results between anywhere between one and two weeks and how often you should peel you should be able to schedule a series of anywhere of like four to eight peels like one peel every week um any more than eight weekly peels is not recommended um also to keep the results a series of peels every three to four months is recommended and in the summertime you definitely want to avoid any peeling because the sun's rays are a lot stronger all right and pretty much like once you get the desired result that you want you can just schedule like once a month as often as you want just to kind of you know keep the results that you want so it's all based on um you know how the the strength of the acid that the that they're performing on you and also like your schedule and stuff so that's it you guys this is um, my quick overview on chemical peels i hope you guys find it informative um my next video will be on separating the peels which i will discuss like the medium peels light peels and deep peels and yeah, so I have a few more videos um, 
in regards to the exfoliate ex exfoliation so keep a lookout on those and thank you guys so much and have a blessed day bye